Hey guys, in today's video, we will be talking about flattening the curve. We've all heard the term flattening the curve, and we know the basics, but do we really understand the math of it? In this video and slideshow, we will be going backstage to explore the mathematics behind flattening the curve, so that everyone can understand what's going on in the world around them. Imagine one person in Guelph gets COVID-19. Now imagine that person passes on to two more people, and they pass it on to two more people, etc. Two would be the R basic reproduction number of the virus, because everyone would transmit to two people. So here's the geometric model that we would use to calculate the number of cases this week, assuming everyone passed it on to two people. The equation is, the number of cases this week is equal to two times the number of cases last week. And it can also be written as C sub W, which means cases this week, is equal to R, which means reproduction number, times C sub W minus 1, which means cases last week. What would this mean for Guelph, Ontario, in Canada? The cases appear to grow slowly at first, but by week 18, they are shooting up way too fast. Luckily, it's not completely like this in reality. That graph is wrong. The number of cases can't keep going up forever because the number of cases can't get bigger than the population size of Guelph. Once someone gets the virus, they can't get it again. They are immune, meaning over time the virus will die off because it has nowhere else to go. There begins to be less and less susceptible people. So this is a more accurate equation that we can use to calculate how many cases there would be next week, and it's called the SIR model. This equation would be more accurate because we are taking into account how the number of susceptible people decreases over time. The equation is, the number of cases this week is equal to two times the number of cases last week, like the previous equation, but then you have to multiply it times the number of susceptible people divided by the population size. And it can also be written as C sub W is equal to R times C sub W minus one, which you all know already, times S sub W minus one over N, which means susceptibles last week divided by the number of people or the population size. With our SIR model, this is what the cases would look like if the R reproduction number was 2.5 on average. The cases would have a very sharp peak and then come back down again. But this is not what we want because we want to flatten the curve. Think about the Spanish flu, where by the end of the pandemic, most people were either dead or had gotten the flu and recovered, making them immune. But we don't want this with COVID-19 because lots of people could die and now we're closer to developing a vaccine than they were in the early 1900s. The point of flattening the curve is to prolong the amount of cases over time to give doctors and scientists more time to find a vaccine for this virus. Another problem is the emergency rooms and hospitals can't take that many people at once. They will be way too overwhelmed and things would just get a lot worse. So basically flattening the curve is just buying us more time. This is why we social distance. As you can see here, this is what disease spread would look like with social distancing. People would not transmit to as many people, which would slow the spread of the virus. That is the point of social distancing, so that eventually the R value becomes lower. In this image, you can see the flattened curve, the green line, and the peak curve, the red line. The blue line represents the healthcare capacity, and though that's not what the actual healthcare capacity is, this image is proving our point. We want to get the flattened curve below the healthcare capacity so that the hospitals and emergency rooms aren't too overwhelmed. So, we hope you understand how the math behind flattening the curve works now that you have read the slideshow. And hopefully now you will understand how important it is for us and the government to follow all social distancing guidelines to help end the pandemic. We will eventually get out of this and we need everyone to help get this done. So, if you want to experiment yourself with different R values, make sure to watch our next video coming out soon.